as a statement of fact, not a single human being, past, present, or future, is ever going to touch my canvases. Andy Warhol. I, I knew the gentleman. We used to, as they say, hang. Lots of people in that industry, art, fashion, dance, actors, musicians, would go to a mythical place called Studio 54. Before most of you were born, it was a watering hole, a place where if you were gay, straight, LBG, Jewish, black, anything you want, everybody gathered together and forget about the problems of the racist and judgmental world. Everybody gathered there and had a wonderful time all together. The human sort of a microcosm of humanity with music and lights and all the beautiful people. Cool. So I was seeing, I was in a relationship with a, a wonderful female, iconic television recording star and so on. And we'd go around to these places because it was fun. Ran into Warhol, Andy Warhol. And later on, found myself in the studio where he was creating his art. Andy Warhol, it bears noting, was never trained, didn't have expertise on pretty much anything. He was just a kid from a small town, very conservative, where the people in that town had problems with his sexuality. So he was a very, very shy, just a sweet, kind soul, non-judgmental, and he was fascinated by people. So he used to take his SX-70, a Kodak, where the photos would come out right away because he loved, he was more interested in other people than himself. And then he started painting. He took photos and paint and started a magazine called Interview Magazine. I mean, he was a groundbreaking guy, totally untrained. Created the Velvet Underground, uh, had his own label, made films and stuff. And yet he himself didn't do it. I never saw him pick up a paintbrush and do it. He was more like a director with other people saying, I want, can you put some more red on there and stuff like that. And it, it was a life altering experience because we all think the definition of something is this and there are no variations. And in art, it could be anything. So a lot of the art that you folks see out there, other than the Renaissance, which is how it's pronounced, where the artist actually used the paintbrush and the paint and only they touched the art. Michelangelo really did David out of that piece of rock all by himself. There were no helpers. Later on, artists used, you know, other people. Give me a little more of this, a little more of that. Like a director on a film. So modern day, I'm untrained. I'm not Andy Warhol. I couldn't shine his shoes. But I have a decidedly different point of view about my art. I never thought of it as art. I thought of it as, gee, I'm in a pandemic and I want to express myself without anybody looking. So I was doing it for me. I didn't care if it was going to sell or anything. Thank goodness I make a living. So as a statement of fact, not a single human being, past, present, or future, is ever going to touch my canvases. It's going to be my paintbrushes, my gardening tools. Uh, I can use a sharpened pencil just because I like the way it dips into the art. Or uh, even my finger. I can stick my finger in there and just do it because I don't know any of the rules. You can think of me as that little kid who's uh, just growing his first tooth, who's in a bathtub, and who shits in the bathtub. What do you do with that shit? Of course, you pick a handful and start messing around on the wall with it. That's the most honest and... Uh, that's honest art. That little, that little putz is expressing himself just cause, without anybody, without anybody thinking about it. And that's when you get doesn't matter what the market is or you know you don't even think of it as art we're human beings so our bot you can take the point of view our bodies are art that's right dancers do that you can contort yourself you can focus on films take photos of it do art everybody should do art